Well, I cannot believe it. I think uh, this is uh, maybe my fourth time trying this. And finally, it works perfectly. We have the intro video with music and everything. So thank you, everybody, for welcoming us uh, one more time for UX and Tay. My name is Juliet, and I will be your host for today. And if you don't know about UX and Tame, uh, this is a space to empower new UX designers com coming to the field. And for today, we have a guest. She's going to take us uh, about, tell us about what is to be a product designer in the hospitality business or sector. And I'm super excited. We've been waiting for this for a while. And I changed a little things being this is a live event and she just knew about this not long ago. So thank you so much, Ali, for being so flexible. Uh, why don't we invite her over so she can tell us about uh, about her. Hi, Ali. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you again for joining me and to talk about you and UX and time. Why don't we start telling people who you are? Yeah, for sure. So, um, hi, my name is Ali. I am a product designer and I work in the hospitality sector, which is the name of this uh, episode. But um, I uh, started out designing in high school and I was really into art and like very, very interested in like going to art school. And I was in yearbook and did like, you know, the yearbook layouts and all that good stuff. And then um, when I went to college, I got cold feet and I was afraid to do art because I was like, oh no, I don't want to be like, you know, there's so much competition. I'm going to have a hard time like making it in the field. So I ended up changing my major to exercise science. By the end of college, I was really unhappy, um, which is like my advice to people is follow your passions. <laughs> but um, I was not loving it and I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. So once I graduated from college, I kind of felt like lost. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So that's when I came across UX design. Um, and I've been doing UX design for about three years now. Um, I've worked at a couple of different companies. I've worked for healthcare. I've worked for theme parks. I've worked now at Intelity, which is a hospitality tech company for over a year. So I have feel like I have like a pretty wide range of experience in different types of products, but um, I'm really enjoying working in the hospitality industry. Uh, I love those changes uh, of careers that usually takes you back to what you're really passionate about. But before we dig a little more into what is to work in the hospitality sector, why don't you tell us a fun fact about you? Oh, um, <laughs> one of the, <laughs> I always one, love this question. I feel, <laughs> I feel like I have like so many like random fun facts about me, but I think a really interesting one was during COVID, I got really bored like most people and picked up like a random hobby. And I started tracing my family tree on ancestry.com. And I've traced my family tree back to the 1600s, um, which wow. I just like, it's, yeah, it's really crazy to me. I've seen pictures cause like other people in my family tree like upload pictures. I've seen pictures of like grave sites of in churches from like England. Mm. I've seen a picture of my great great grandmother on my father's wow. side who I didn't even know existed. So it's been really interesting and it's been just fun to learn about where I come from. Oh, can you can you share a little bit where, where those roots? <laughs> Yeah, I'm like pretty much 100% from Scotland and England and Ireland. So like, I guess like the British Isles, as you might call them. But um, it's been easy for me to trace back certain parts of the tree mm -hmm. because of like marriage, like Catholic, like marriage mm -hmm. and death and baptism records. And like, the, apparently the church kept like really good records. <laughs> so, yes. um, and it's like, it's really interesting because you can actually see the records like they, wow. they pull up on the computer and you can look at them they're very hard to read like the handwriting in the yes. 1600s was like very very cursive i yeah i don't know how to explain it but yes. it's hard to read i'm like you know it'll be like it um translates it for you into like times new roman so that's nice <laughs> mm, love it I, I think i've been trying to do that with my family for a while um and I really think I, we need to sit down with my, I don't know, with my aunt. She's the one who's really interested to do it because honestly, how far we know is like my grandparents and we don't even yeah. have that many pictures. And I feel like, like you were saying, because 
maybe the Catholic uh, Church keep everything really in, in good in papers and everything it was easier yeah. for you to track so that's pretty cool that's amazing yeah. um okay so let's go back a little bit i know that you share a little bit about how did you ended up going into design but why exactly did you choose ux yeah. design and how the careers got you into into this field yeah, for sure. So, um, like I said, like I started out, I've always been like really creative, very like artistic, um, graduated from college was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I did some graphic design work during college and I liked it. I was like, Oh, I could do something like that. Um, and then I, my cousin actually did a web development boot camp program where she lives. And I was like, oh, that's like kind of interesting. Like maybe I'd be interested in that. So I started looking into web development boot camps and I was like, you know, like I could learn to code, right? I don't think that that would have been great for me, which I'm very glad that I came across UX. So um, when I was looking at these boot camp programs, I came across a UX design program and I saw like what it was about, um, you know, the wireframing it's kind of like graphic design in a way. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. I like that. I saw that there was like a research component to it. I could use like some of my scientific background from college. And I just thought it was a really good fit. Um, and when I met with the boot camp, I talked to them and like, I don't know, I was just sold. I was like, I think I found like the perfect career for me. Um, so yeah, and then I attended a boot camp program. It was pre-COVID. So I went in person. I did a full-time program, which was intense. It was a uh, you know, like 40 hours a week wow. <laughs> for 10 weeks. But um, I definitely learned a lot. So. Oh, I'm so jealous because I did end up doing the boot camp too. But uh, my initial thought of going back to school, it was just going and meet people and have that creating um, juices around and I don't know, and pick on people's computer, whatever. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, my, my bootcamp ended up being, uh, March, no, April, 2020. And they keep promising us every single week. No, no, no. We, we are going back to school. We are going back to school. And I feel like they just went back maybe, I don't know, two months yeah. ago to do the in-person programs. Uh, so that's pretty cool that you have the chance to do that because I feel like that will that gave you a lot of again that interaction with peers and and know a little more about people too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I definitely think that it was nice to be in it together with people. You had a lot of brainstorming and collaboration mm -hmm. between students, um, which I mean, even now with like things being remote for work still mm -hmm. you definitely lose some of that and you know i think that everyone can agree that collaborating is easier in person definitely and something that is always really hard for anyone and and i i feel like boot camp school safe learning is finding that first job and i feel maybe because you were were you in a school did you finish a school like a little bit before covid or kind of in those it spots did. because i think that's just uh put more stress in finding a job i did i did graduate school a little bit before covid and um that was great but mm -hmm. the school that i went to was not where i live um oh. so a lot of like boot camps like will help you find a job like they have like mm -hmm. they're connected with the community in their area I didn't really mm -hmm. have that luxury um mm -hmm. because nobody was really offering remote jobs quite yet because COVID you know really changed that so um I moved I went to a boot camp in Miami and I moved back to Orlando so I kind of had to start from scratch um it was hard like I I feel like people have this idea that they're going to go to a boot camp and they're going to come out and it's going to be like easy to find a job. And I think a lot of boot camps um, mm -hmm. market themselves like as that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's fair because it does take work. Um, you know, networking, super important. Your portfolio mm -hmm. is super important. I work with mentees on ADP list to help them find their first job. And what I tell everyone is like, your portfolio is like the, I mean, they see your resume, of course, but like your portfolio mm -hmm. is what they see of you. Like, mm -hmm that is like the key to getting an interview. So like, you've got to work on your portfolio. You got to make it like the best it can be. You want to make sure your case studies are solid. You want to get feedback on them. Um, I got my first job 
through working on my portfolio and the sheer willpower <laughs> to keep applying for jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta be, you gotta be okay with like getting rejected. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people, a lot of people get disappointed and get discouraged and give up and like, you gotta keep going. I say mm -hmm. like, you could apply for a hundred jobs and get one. It could be the yeah. first one you apply for or the hundredth, like who mm -hmm. really knows? So you just gotta keep, keep pushing on and it's helpful if you have like an attitude like if you know that you, like I guess like and even if you're faking it till you make it like if you know that yeah. you're a good designer and that people are missing out when they reject you because you don't have like that mm -hmm. amount of experience that they're looking for I think that that really helps yeah and I feel like and again what he what I tell a lot of people too is like okay maybe you got a lot of rejection and yes it's super sad but this is training you and this is giving you the ability to find the job, the, the, the perfect job that you're going to, or you deserve at the end of the day, because um, doesn't make sense to go for a job that you really don't believe and get a job that the company don't really care that much about you. So I feel like I know at the beginning it's hard to get rejected. And, and I understand that you want to get a job. And I mean, you, you pay stuff with jobs. Yes. Like, that's the main source of your life. So I, I totally, it's totally understandable. <laughs> but um, but how did you end up finding that first job? How did you how did you land it? Yeah, I just I do. Okay, so like, I actually, I kind of I had a short term contract before like my okay. first like longer term job. So the first job that I got was a one month contract uh, for mm -hmm. Advent Health. And I got that mm -hmm. just straight up by like, applying applying yes. applying applying mm -hmm. i applied for the role um the hiring manager called me and i'm like really grateful because he like took a chance with me and he was just great um the second role that i got was a contract position with disney and mm -hmm. i got really like lucky i guess like right place right time um the hiring mm -hmm. manager had reached out to me on linkedin and asked me if i was yeah. interested because mm -hmm. they were looking for people and like i don't know <laughs> i don't know what he saw in me like mm -hmm. to be honest with you because i was like pretty new mm -hmm. um but i guess that there was something that they were looking for um and it was just luck like honestly okay. sometimes yeah sometimes things just fall into your lap and like yes. that's okay it's okay to celebrate that <laughs> oh for sure and and i feel like again maybe it fall into your lap but that means that you have done so many stuff before beside before that yes so it's not like just one day you woke up and it just happened i feel like there was so much yeah. work behind uh you know like that little seed that you put and then you keep putting water but then one day you just see a whole tree so let's celebrate it for sure yeah but then what happened with that job i think that's that's oh. that's the sad part <laughs> yeah <laughs> So I didn't really get to work there for very long um, because this was like right before COVID um, mm -hmm. kind of like entered the country and like took over and I got laid off um, mm -hmm. within like half a year of working there, even like mm -hmm. less than that. Um, and it was really hard. You know, I'm just starting out in my professional career. Um, you know, I'm young. Like, I yeah. never expected to get laid off from a job. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like layoffs are like, you see them in movies where, like, somebody's been working there for, like, 15 years and gets <laughs> laid off, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, once once COVID started, like, really affecting mm -hmm. um, the U.S., we kind of knew it was coming because mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. obviously the parks sector is going to get yeah. very affected by that um but i'll be honest with you like i was devastated it was of very course. upsetting yeah. um you know i landed this role that i was really interested in like i really thought that i was going to be there for a long time that i was going to grow there mm -hmm. um i really liked my coworkers. like mm -hmm. i the team like was great and like culture fit and like being happy at your role is like one of the most important yeah. things to me. So um, after that, like I was like pretty depressed. Um, yeah. to be, I mean, like I'm all for like talking about mental health. Like I was, I was not very happy. And you know, I took a little time off to just kind of like recollect myself. Mm -hmm. um, and then during that that space of time, like you know, where COVID had just started like rampaging through the country. And a lot of people were getting laid off from their roles everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I 
it was hard to find a job because of the competition because mm -hmm. there was not a lot of places hiring and there was a lot of designers looking for roles. Mm -hmm. um, so I spent some time freelancing. I came to the conclusion that freelancing is not for me. Um, yeah. I really mm -hmm. enjoy, I really, I mean, honestly, I really enjoy working with a team. I enjoy the collaboration that goes on between me and product and developers. Um, I enjoy, you know, writing business requirements and like all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. freelancing just, you know, it just, I like, like the routine and mm -hmm. there's my routine with freelancing really. So um, I started looking for a job after freelancing for a little bit and it took me a while to find something. And I finally landed a role with a company in Miami and it was a remote job thanks to COVID. And mm -hmm. um, I actually got that job through networking. So um, yeah. mm -hmm. there was other people I knew from my boot camp that worked there. So like just reiterating, like networking is so important, you yeah. know, it definitely helps. <laughs> Yeah. And I mean, you never know who who's give you a hand at one point or who you are you going to help at one point. So keeping those um, relationships alive and honest and sincere doesn't matter which point of your career are really important. Um, but I think another question that I have, because um, I imagine that you learn so much, even for that one month job, for the second one, for the Disney one, and for, for the freelancing. And I feel like all of this experience, it helped you so much to land that next job. Uh, and more, not because you said uh, networking help you, but uh, that experience is giving you so much to to the job that you are right now and and you were saying you have had the chance to work in so many different sectors and industries and it, i think that's so powerful at one point um so how now is to work in the um hospitality sector compared to to the other the other industries that you work before that so it's like I would say it's like the same, but it's very different. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things I tell my mentees that I work with is like, because when they're looking for a job, they're like, oh, like I'm really interested in this sector or like I don't want to get stuck in this one industry. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to move around. And I'm like, well, I'm like part of the job, like a big part of the job for UX is problem solving. And I'm like, in, if you can problem solve, like you can problem solve anywhere. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, having industry knowledge is very helpful, but you can always learn it. And that's kind of what it's been for me. Um, I came into my current role um, and I didn't, I mean, Disney like a little bit, but I didn't really work in like hospitality, like hotels type yes. of deal before. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, there was so much to learn about how hotels work and like mm -hmm. so many terms and like all the softwares that hotels use. So um, it's been like fun learning about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's been like a very interesting couple of years for hospitality, right? Um, yeah. COVID really, really threw it for a loop. Um, what's interesting is when I was interviewing at my company that I'm at now, I was kind of concerned because I was like, hey, like, you know, there's of a course. pandemic Getting going laid on. off like, again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I was like, how's it going? And they said that they actually had their best, some of their best months like wow. during COVID. So um, I think that hospitality tech actually kind of thrived during the pandemic because mm -hmm. the whole idea of like the contactless guest journey came about. Yeah. It's like, we want to spend like less time interacting with people at the hotels and like it's stuck. It works, you know? Um, so we want to do like mobile check-in. We want to be able to request things, um, you know, and especially in this like current age with like the internet of things, people just expect to be like connected to the internet. And yeah. I think a lot of hotels are like behind the curve, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, you know, you just go in the room, they still have like the, the, phone with like the cord and yes. like, the binder with like the pages. Yes. <laughs> so yes. I think, I think that, you know, there's a lot of room for growth in the hospitality sector as well. Oh my gosh. My dogs are going crazy. I don't know if you can hear them in the background. Yeah. That's okay. Um, <laughs> they're saying hi. Okay, so, yeah. They're saying hi. I don't know what they're barking at. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's interesting. Um, so one of the things that my company does is we work with hotels and we make apps for hotels. Okay. We actually have like two different kinds of products. We do um, we do a white label app. So essentially we have an app that is branded to the hotel's brand. Mm -hmm. So we're almost like a ghost or like a skeleton of an app. So 
the brand and the hotel like lives through and we are just like the like I don't know deliverer of it yes, um yes. and then we do also do we do custom apps but um it's very interesting to mm -hmm work as like this designer for this white label app with we have like over 400 clients and wow they all have very different needs mm -hmm. um there's just a lot of conflicting needs all the time you know we have the big hotel with like you know the metropolitan area and then we have like the resort in hawaii and we have like the family friendly hotel with like yeah. the water park and like so um it's definitely interesting having all of these different um, kind of like personas and business requirements. And then, I mean, even within the travelers, like we have like a business traveler, we have like a traveler for fun. We have yeah. like the mom with the family. So um, just kind of trying to find the balance between all of those things mm -hmm. can be difficult, <laughs> um, but it's, it's an interesting problem to solve. And it's not really something I had thought about when I started this position, but it's definitely affected my work a lot. Um, for sure. Yeah, like, could you tell us a little bit about that? Because I, I, at the same time, we have these app that it could be used for any hotel. Yes, it's pretty much that's how it is. But then, how do you cover different needs from from different hotels? <laughs> um, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> so it's it's difficult. There's a lot of prioritizing. Um, you know, a lot of discussion of what we think is going to be like of most value to the user we have um we have this like dilemma I guess that is what the guest at the hotel actually wants mm -hmm. versus what the hotel wants mm -hmm. or like what the hotel thinks the guest wants yeah. so um you know using user testing like using um research mm -hmm. industry research it's kind of like hey this is like what the user actually wants the user being the guest um, and like, you know, doing that is going to be better in the long term. Yes. Um, so communication is important. Um, you know, we try to keep the guest in mind while also like adding value for the hotel itself, you know, mm -hmm. um, like increasing revenue through things like, mm -hmm. you know, di in room dining and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like, yeah, that's super interesting. And I feel like I feel like with any designers that you speak doesn't matter the sector, it's going to be always the same dilemma. <laughs> yeah, it's like business comes, it's like we need to fix this. You you have to give me exactly what I'm asking for. But then you go back to the research and uh what the data is telling you, and we are like, no, like uh users or guests don't don't really want that. Um so how do you balance that constant feedback from business and customers and and how do you sell because at the end of the day we need to sell uh or really improve the user uh, and we need to do our best to convince the business in the other side to do what we said yeah <laughs> for sure um so like it's really a collaboration between like people on the product team to kind of prioritize feedback. Um, we get a lot of feedback. We get mm -hmm. a lot of feedback. Um, we have, like I said, like we have over 400 clients, like we have a lot of hotels and like they love to give us feedback. Mm -hmm. So it's not like really like the individual feedback that I personally focus on. It's like the trends and the feedback. So mm -hmm. if we're getting a lot of feedback about one thing, then, um, or like, a, I don't know, a lot of feedback about a certain feature, um, that's all like trending the same type of feedback, then um, mm -hmm. that's kind of where we start to like prioritize, I guess, mm -hmm. to add new features, to fix a bug, to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like I said, like it's reminding them that doing what's best for the guests is what's best for them um, mm -hmm. for the most part, you know, um, and data is really important. We're a very small company and I'm the only designer at the company. Okay. so you know, it's been a process over the, like when I've been working here for the past, it's almost a year and a half now, um, that we're like focusing on in the future. One of our objectives is to start using data in smart ways to really mm -hmm. elevate our product. Um, have we exactly figured out what we're going to do with that? Not quite, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, it is something that can help a lot driving decisions and driving 
ideas. And one of the things I do want to say about it is before you can use data to make decisions, you need to collect good data. Yeah. Collecting uh, good mm -hmm. data is so important. And since, you know, like if you're just starting out, like at a company and you want to drive that home because it's a lot easier to start out collecting good data than to collect bad data and try to go mm -hmm. back and fix it. Um, so, yeah. Well, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. And um, like, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, we were talking about the same, but I'm just, I work in uh, retail for so long. And then when people mm -hmm. like customers would get mad because you don't give them something, they will go and write a bad comment, you know? And, and then we will have all these bad comments that honestly, they were not true. It was just customers trying to pay back what what we didn't do for them um so in a way because you get so many feedback uh, i imagine for from guests and hotels how do you distinct with good data and bad data yeah um i mean we kind of take it if it's like actionable so you know if a hotel gives us some feedback and you know it's something that we can action upon and they're like hey, we noticed X, Y, Z, like our guests are struggling with this one thing. Um, we're like, okay, cool. Like that's good data. Like, like they're telling us that our guests are struggling with it. If you get, if you get um, like a, a feedback, I don't know if you get, if you get feedback that it's like, just like, oh, like we don't like this. Yes. Um, that's great. Um, that's okay. <laughs> and like, that's helpful, but like, we can't do any, like, what don't you like? Like, why don't you like it? Like, is mm -hmm. it causing friction with the guests? Is it causing friction with the staff members? Like, you know, we need more information. Um, so I think that just giving a lot of information is the best way to go. Yeah. Um, I want to go back a little bit about the structure of, uh, the team. I know that we don't have these questions here, but I think it's something that pop up uh, to me at the beginning when you were talking about the team and then you mentioned it, uh, saying the only designer in the team. How is the relationship with the rest of the team as you being the only yeah. designer? Mm -hmm. It's it's great. Um, we have, so like a little bit about like our, the org, um, we have our VP of product um, who is like the main product person. Mm -hmm. um, we have me, I'm the UX designer or the product designer. And then we have a couple of other people in the product space, like product owners, product managers. Um, and then we have like our development team. Um, and it's great. I, the only thing that I think I miss about, I mean, mm -hmm. not the only thing I miss, but one of the big things that I miss about working with a big team is the ability to get like UX specific feedback from people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, at one of my previous roles, we did this thing called Design Lab and we would all get together a couple times a week and throw our designs up on the um, projector and we would talk about um, the context of it and then everybody would mm -hmm. just give us feedback on it and that was very helpful to work through problems with like a group of like-minded people mm -hmm. um that's something i'm actually working on right now is figuring out like how to get good feedback <laughs> from everyone mm -hmm. so um i i actually met with a mentor on adp list and she gave me some suggestions that i'm about to try out um but yeah it's like uh it's a small team, so everyone knows each other, which is really yeah. nice. Um, we all work together pretty closely. I work a lot with development. You know, there's a lot of communication between product and development, which, in my opinion, is the way it should be, because mm -hmm. you're going to have a lot more seamless of a process that mm -hmm. way. So, yeah, I don't know. That's pretty cool. And I feel like um, that's such an important part of the team environment to really have a really re good relation or close relationship with any other team because at the end of the day uh you work together and, and there is no way that is designed without development and business without design so it has to be like a really nice dance between the two of you to to make it happen um what about because let's say you say that you started like a year and a half ago and hospitality has changed so much I, i'm talking more about like COVID. like we're kind of out of COVID and coming more into like back to normal uh, mm -hmm. how do you feel about the new challenges coming in for hospitality yeah yeah so um 
I guess like one of the big challenges that I think is coming is the lack of staffing, which I know a lot of a lot of places are really struggling with that. But I also think a lot of um, hospitality companies are trying to cut back also on staff Mm -hmm. to save money. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, many hotels like their management system, their property management system, which is the software that they use to manage their hotels are cloud based and API driven. And like hospitality tech, like we're able to take that and like create tools to create like automatic workflows. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the more that we can take that, like the administrative tasks, like checking people in, um, you know, answering their messages, Mm -hmm. the more that we can take that and create like workflows for that, then I think that the staff at the hotel will be a lot more equipped to Mm -hmm. actually have like guest interactions and focus on like the hospitality part Mm -hmm. which is you know making the guest feel like they can get like the most out of their stay Mm -hmm. yeah i love that uh because at the end of the day that's what you remember when you go a hotel like how uh they treating you and were they nice were they welcoming and if you can take the load work of all this administrative work uh, and then put it into smiling, asking people or uh, telling them where to go for drinks or whatever it is. So I, I think that's a good one. Um, did you imagine yourself to be here uh, when you started UX design? <laughs> no, I, I really, <laughs> I really didn't. Like, cause like I never, like I said, I never imagined getting laid off from my job. Yes. So I, this whole journey has been like such a roller coaster, and there's been so many ups and downs. But like, I wouldn't really trade it for anything. Like, I'm very, very happy to be what I'm doing right now, to be in where I'm at right now. Um. Like, I don't really have any regrets. So that's always good, right? (laughs) Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's so nice. And I feel at the end of the day, um, again, we keep watering our plants. And sometimes we think that that plant died. But honestly, it was just feeding the other tree that was coming behind, uh, that it was a better tree for you. Uh, I know. (laughs) I I have so many plants now. (laughs) So so do I. So do I. Um, what is next for you? Mm-hmm. I can't say for certain. <laughs> yeah, I um, I'm actually doing my MBA right now. Nice. Um, yes. I wanted to get I wanted to get a better understanding of the way that the business runs, so that mm-hmm. I can be like a more well-rounded designer. Because right now I don't really understand. You know, they throw up like the KPIs on the board, and I'm like, what am I looking at? Yeah. So I've been doing my MBA, and I'm learning a lot. I never yeah. thought that I would do math again. Um, like <laughs> after my undergrad, I was like, I'm never going to use this, and now I'm doing math again, and I am not super happy about it but um so my main focus right now is just kind of getting through that and finishing that um I'm at this like point in my life where I'm really trying to like accept and like enjoy and celebrate the present and take it like one day Mm -hmm. at a time I mean of course I have like long-term goals and ambitions but like I don't know I don't like to worry about the future um you know I just take it one day one piece um break down my goals and just get there when I can yeah, no, that's great. And I think um, I had got laid off before. And, and I know that feeling of um, what is next and worrying so much when I wasn't in that job about being somewhere else. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. so crazy. Yes, it's like, oh, um, so I think for me, it's the same. Just enjoying what I have right now. Keep working in my little steps to wherever I wanted to go. But honestly, being grateful for, for the moment. Uh, you said a lot of times that you are an AD Pilates. So um, if people want to find you <laughs> and if they want to book a one-on-one with you, what do can, they can do. I will share the links, but you can talk about it a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, I like to especially focus on people coming like into their career now since I recently did that. And mm-hmm. um, I feel like I have a lot of good like tips that worked really well for me. And they've worked really well for a lot of my mentees to help them get their foot in the door with these companies. Um, so I'm always open to chat. You can always reach me through LinkedIn. Um, and I'm always like willing to help out. So yeah, perfect. Uh, this was so good. Thank you so much. See, you did amazing. There was nothing to worry about. <laughs> I, I was a little nervous, but um, it's, I think it went well. 
And, yeah, you did um, amazing. Uh, all my friends this is all for today. Great. Thank you so much, Ali. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Oh, I forgot. Uh, do not forget uh, to follow follow me on YouTube. Now we have YouTube channel. YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe so you can get uh, notifications of new people coming in. We have so many guests. Uh, we are all booked until November, so every week we're having a new person that is sharing their stories and empower others to see what they can do. Uh, you can find us in LinkedIn to UX and Tame. And again, Ali, thank you so much for sharing and uh, best luck in your MBA. That's I don't know where you get all this Thank stuff. you. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.